Hello, good morning, guys. Welcome to the rest of the world from the Bavarian Forest Home Office. Uh, and today I have two guests from, I assume, Munich. And we will um, talk about something that comes deep from my heart, the other part. It's about supply innovation. My name is Thomas Holzner, and as my guests I have today, uh, Michael Klinger on my left hand side and uh, Konrad Weichmann on my right hand side. Uh, nice to have you here. And before we go into details, I think it's better that you introduce yourself because I would take two hours for each of you. So, Michael, some insights okay. about you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thomas, for the introduction of the meeting. So uh, let me talk about what I did in the last yeah, 40 years within Siemens. I joined the, the company in 1986. It's a long time um, uh, for yeah, 40 seconds to introduce. So I was in many different roles across our divisions. Started with engineering in production and later in R&D. Um, then I moved to management positions for marketing and sales. And in 2001, uh, Redum event switched me to the other side of the supply chain to the lead of a purchasing council with Siemens in, in several corporate projects. In since four years, that's around about uh, 2017, uh, my attention has been focused on the initiating and implementing of platforms to identify innovations from the procurement market and digital scouting right now. That's what I'm doing right and what I'm talking today. Thank you. Thank you. So, Konrad, what about you? Yeah, thank you, Thomas, for the introduction. Hello also from my side. I've been working with Siemens just like Michael also for many years in various functions, in various Siemens businesses such as telecommunications, mobility, energy and also in corporate. After my engineering studies, I joined Siemens in research and development. I continued my career in sales, in consultancy, and for many years in different service businesses. In service, I have been driving service innovations and the digital transformation. So you can see that innovation is also very, very close to my heart. Since 2020, I'm working within the central supply chain management department, where I am coordinating and facilitating together with Michael and with my colleagues from all the Siemens businesses, the supplier innovation activities. Thank you, Conrad. So um, the chat is also open for your questions. I just got one notice with a black screen. I hope that's also no sound and black screen. Daniel, maybe some of our Oh, push the play button. So the chat is, is hopefully organizing himself. Um, so coming back to the topic of today, supply innovation. So one additional comment, not prepared for the other two guys. Um, we have at the moment three engineers on board within the procurement area. So maybe there's a tendency for the future. And especially when I look at these two gentlemen, they are also working about supply innovation. I run personally my first supply innovation competition 2010 within Transformers in Austria, where we started this whole show. And since that, I'm passionately um, observating what the guys in Munich are doing. And I think um, Michael will show something like a supply innovation platform. So we come back in this uh, later. Conrad uh, is supporting the Digi network at the moment with this ecosystem topic and also whether suppliers must be a, a very important part of the ecosystem. Uh, sorry, Daniel, in the chat, we have several times no screen and sound. Maybe there is a, an issue. So sorry about that. Uh, but we are working from the home office. We are a startup. So this means we don't have a back backup. We have a small backup. And as usual, Daniel is our one man show behind the screen. And uh, I hope that the rest of you can see and hear us. Before we go into details, I have now to cheat a little bit because we prepared this time three Menti questions. And the first Menti question would be, or will be, uh, and Daniel can uh, slice it in now, as a potential supplier, I'm fam familiar with Siemens supply innovation so that we can a kind of pulse check um, on which maturity level our audience is, in which information level, and uh, also how f famous or how known 
supply as Siemens innovation topic is. As we normally have a certain time delay, uh, I will wait until some uh, answers will um, pop in. I would start with the question and I would choose Michael because I think it's also mm -hmm. important to set a baseline. And the first baseline is uh, what do we have to imagine under supplier innovation? So, what does it mean? Yeah, that's. Thank you. That, that, that's always the first question what I, what I got when I'm talking with people like you, but even so in the company. It's, uh, so I have prepared a slide to, to show you a little bit more in detail. So and supplier innovation is the word supplier itself. And though we do not talk about on some innovation itself, so the combination of supplier and innovation. And Daniel, please, could you show us the slide number one on the side? to have a view on it. And what I mean in is on the first step is, let's have a look on the entire value chain of Siemens. Two thirds of the total value at version Siemens with our product will be produced in our suppliers and sub suppliers. And the rest is in-house for Siemens. That means so they see the dominant of the value add on our supplier side. And, it's, and we are talking about not just one supplier's key supplier. So we do have 80,000 suppliers, volume suppliers with more than 10,000 euro purchasing volume per year. And all the company altogether, so that's around about 250,000 new products will be developed what we buy from our suppliers. And this is a massive it. And in each detail is a potential for a new idea, for creativity, for an innovation. So it's not a must to have 250,000 new innovations every year, but there is a huge potential to do this. So with our suppliers. And so let me tell you some other view on this topic is our suppliers, they are on the very beginning of the whole entire value chain. It's like if you build a house, so the fundament is very important. So all the mistakes you do on the very beginning, so you cannot correct it later on. That means the importance of the material we are buying is pretty high. And that's what we have to care about this. That's what we have to look on this point. And this is supplier innovation is, yes, pick up the idea from the supply market, from 140 countries, from millions of engineers, from different branches, they have a different focus on the same side. And that's what we're willing to use much more. And that's the supply innovation. Okay, that's a, a, a quite broad statement, I think. Uh, regarding the figures, uh, I think um, people outside Siemens can understand that we need some structure because to manage more than 80,000 suppliers and the potential innovations is a hell of complexity. If I remember the calculation, we have so outside Siemens roughly three quarters of a million engineers that are working for Siemens in a different area and different technology. So say seven to 800,000 engineers at the supplier side. So do we need black and white? Do we need longer also any R&D within Siemens? <laughs> it's a good question. Of course we do. Yes. But it is, uh, yeah, if we just talk about the numbers and some when I'm talking about supply innovation in the engineers. Uh, um, I remember on my own time on R&D in the very beginning, so more than 50% of my whole time was talking with suppliers. So we're uh, sitting together in meetings. So then not new product will be designed within Siemens without suppliers. That means that's an important part. And supplier innovation or innovation itself becomes more and more as a teamwork. I will not talk about so the ideas from suppliers should be used one by one by Siemens. And we do not ask our suppliers to design a new train or a new CT or a new gas turbine or uh, our product. So they have to contribute it. And on the other side, so we do not ask our supplier to take over our designs one by one. It should be an iterative process by a team which have a different focus, a different view on the same topic inside and on the same question. And with these different answers we have, so we can develop together and 
So we're a new product. But on the lead on this process is always our own R&D, is always our own technology because these guys are more close to our customers. They know exactly what our customers need. And an excellent idea is just an idea and not an innovation without customers who will buy this. And that's the reason why it's important and why we also, of course, we need the lead of our technology and our R&D department. Yeah, this I would never question. I think we need these guys, but I think it's a tremendous figure. So we can meet the potential of a million, million people outside. So we did now the first say summary about this topic coming now to the other topic. Conrad, um, innovation is like a, a elastic ribbon uh, and with multi dimensions. So what are what is your say definition of innovation or what are you looking for yes you're absolutely right innovation is a is a ribbon and michael already said innovation this is not just a brilliant idea innovation is the brilliant idea plus market success so only an idea which is bought from the, our customers will turn into an innovation and there are three different levels of innovation which i see and we also have prepared a slide on that one. Perhaps, Daniel, you can show us this slide with the three different innovation types. And those types are evolution, revolution, and disruption. And I'll walk you through those, show you my ideas around innovation. Evolution, yeah, this is the improving of existing parts. This is the step-by-step -step enhancements. This might be a new software as well. It is not reduced to hardware or tires. Revolution is in between the two extremes. Revolution are the major enhancements. Those are also the major new features which bring the additional value add. The additional value add for us as end customers or also for our business customers. This could be a completely reworked product or solution. And finally, the next big thing, the disruption. The disruption which destroys stable environments. This is completely changing the way we are doing business. This is changing the way how we work. And this is also very much related to open innovation. One example I can think of from my experience in the service business is the shift from on-site service when our service technicians visited the customer site to remote services facilitated by technology. And all of a sudden our customer didn't see our service technician anymore but we were working on his plant like we did it before. And also the way how we cooperate with suppliers and with partners changes very much along those three innovation types you see. In evolution, in many cases, we work together with incumbent, with existing suppliers, with whom we are in close contact anyways. When we come to revolution, very much depending on the case, this might happen with major existing suppliers and partners. This might also happen with new suppliers. This is also where digital platforms come into play. And when we talk about disruption, the playground is a completely different one. Here, the playground is open also for startups, also for academia, also for new suppliers who may play a major role in this open innovation game, but also a different kind of partnership is then required when we talk about disruptive innovations. So this as a as a as my definition of those three innovation types. I think I, I like the definition because it's uh, much easy to remember evolution, revolution and disruption. So only three, three consequent names. And I, I think I would like to highlight especially the topic when you always hear about Siemens, the big Siemens and startups, we are quite intensively working together with startup. One of my favorite startups where I had the pleasure to develop something big is called Celunus. In the meantime, it's about together we developed with Celunus the purchase to pay platform that are most of the tax companies or also on the New York Stock Exchange uh, listed companies are using. And they grew with us. So we are also very supportive regarding startups and it doesn't have to be a disruption. If a startup has a good idea regarding evolution, also fine. 
I would like to make a short flashlight. So when you see me always looking around a little bit, I'm looking at the Menti uh, sh short uh, summary. I think we have to do more regarding communication about supply innovation because I would say two thirds are in the lower level of information. But maybe we come back to this later because first we talk with Michael about suppliers and R&D and Conrad explained a little bit what's innovation and with innovation why do we need innovation because we have customers and other cross-functional partners like sales so Conrad how does this side play a role within supply innovation yeah, very good question, Thomas. And before answering this question directly, perhaps let me do the link also from supply innovation to the Siemens Light strategy, which says customer impact, empowered people, technology with purpose and growth mindset. And there is also some kind of the answer. Technology with purpose, this means innovations also from outside with a purpose to create this customer impact. And you asked which role do customers play? I mean, customers, they are those who define the innovation demand. They are those who define what we have to work on so that we can truly talk about an end-to-end -end collaboration from customers via the Siemens units. And you mentioned sales. I would also mention our portfolio management who are channeling those, inform those innovation demands. And of course, our suppliers play a major role. I very much liked one LinkedIn comment um, concerning the invitation to this Digi sofa. So there was one comment saying value chain starts with suppliers. And this is absolutely also what I think of. And I would say that the other end of the value chain, this is the innovation demand, which comes from our customers or even our customers end customer. So when we talk about a train, um, it's definitely us as train riders who define also some demand for those trains. So since we are in a business to business environment, we also have to have those in mind. So it's talking about the complete value chain from suppliers via sales, portfolio management, us as procurement, and then our suppliers who are playing a very, very large role in this. And Thomas, you already mentioned the topic ecosystems. This is something which is getting more and more important um, in everywhere. And ecosystem, this is also about creating win-win or even win-win-win situations. So in a nutshell, this is going from competition towards co-creation. As you know, Conrad, I'm a great fan of co-creation or cooperation. Uh, we had last week a great workshop again together with SAP. We we're working, for example, with uh, this company, and we're also working together with startups regarding co-creation, co-creation, cooperation. Uh, short break. Uh, we got the first uh, as a valid question from Vivek Pratap Singh. I found a little bit from India. Hello to India. And because the first uh, valid question will get a a box of chocolate, but we need then also your details, uh, Vivek. Um, and I would like to slice in this question. This means, as usual, place your questions in the chat. If I don't reply immediately, that's bad emotion. It's only about that I would like to close one topic like Connor just did. And I think this question somehow fits to what Connor had mentioned. And I would split it up the first part of the question to Conrad and the second part to Michael and please try to do it in 30 seconds. Conrad, 30 seconds, what are the best practices to boost supply innovation and Michael and how can procurement be a part of the, uh, the, the same from a strategic perspective? I think the challenge are the 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I, I think I, I beat it. Uh, the best practice to boost supply innovation for me is communication and openness. Okay, procurement, okay. identify the best supplier in the market and give the guidelines of how we work together with our rules for R&D as a service to provide the best effort, the best landing strip for suppliers to present their ideas. So Vivek, I hope your short questions answered uh, are uh, 
this short answers answered your question. Uh, if not, just uh, retype. And then I will change to German Galbino. And I think here I start with um, Michael. How to combine and integrate innovations coming from potential new suppliers with fresh ideas versus the Siemens long requirement list for being ready for business audits, contracts, and declarations? So does, how does this fit together? How do you change uh, with this? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a complex question and it's a complex process behind of this. But we have to think about, uh, we should not make it too complex on this point because as an idea of a supplier, and we have to pick it up, the supplier. And it is the question is always, we have to use the idea of the supplier in our mind. Sometimes we have good ideas from suppliers, but it does not fit in our process right now. Then we have to keep it for later. We have to think about sometimes supplier will present ideas and this idea does not fit by 100% to our products, but we can invite the supplier and we can ask them for their competence. That's what we have to do. Not taking one by one exactly what supplier is providing. And even the supplier has to be open to show, uh, to discuss with us. It is always the initial when a supplier gives us an idea and say, yes, that's what we're doing. And let's talk that's what i mentioned before as an iterative process sometimes it works right now sometimes we do it later hopefully that was the okay. question where we answered the point yeah. uh, i think there's missing the second part because uh, a supplier has an idea does it take two months until he gets a, a, a reply or or two weeks i think it's something that's always a little bit connected to siemens that we we need a little bit longer and we have a long requirement list. So like the ready for business or orders or contract. So yeah, uh, yeah. Michael, maybe you can give us a short update regarding this, how we are dealing with response times and so uh, this topic. Yeah, with, with uh, 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 get, get a little bit forward on our supply innovation platform. So we have a phase of three years time. So what we have to do, the real good ideas, the real innovation we have seen in the past, not just with Siemens. So think about tablets, think about some other real innovations. They need always the right time. Sometimes we have a good idea, but it's not the right time to implement this. And that's the point where we need. So we provide our suppliers and space of three years to present their ideas, three years time. Sometimes it works after one week. Sometimes it works after, I would say 24 months. So we do not have a time schedule behind. It is always the question when this is a supplier or when an R and D engineer is working on this topic, they will pick it up. So that's the most complex thing to bring a new idea at the right time to the user who wants it. So, and that is never would be exactly, we say, coordinated by the same time. For these, on the supply innovation platform, we present three years time for each new idea at least. So, to for the supplies, but there's no time schedule behind. Okay, maybe I come to this back later, or maybe German uh, can then also come back to this topic. Uh, I have a question from Sünke, um, and I assume maybe as also Michael, in your work, what is the ratio of existing suppliers to others in terms of input of idea on ideas process? So others means startups, new suppliers. So existing suppliers to new, new, new partners. Do you have a kind of overview what the ratio? I, I would I would think about uh, when when I remember on this slide what um, Conrad has shown before with evolution uh, disruption uh, of ideas. We say if if I talk about new companies, startups, young companies, so they have more disruptive ideas, brand new ideas. So with our existing suppliers, they know our business quite well they know exactly what we are doing and they're more on the evolution side and they found together on the revolution so that's a part uh, by 50 percent i would say so the share of the ideas i cannot 
give you a number right now because I do not know exactly what existing suppliers doing in a continual tour, in continual meetings with our R&D engineers. So there are thousands of ideas we are creating. Is this an evolution or is this an innovation What a point from the disrupt side will say 90% comes from new company comes from startups because this is the purpose of a startup and that's it's not so many from existing suppliers on the revolution it's party 50 50 the evolution so they come nearly by 100% from existing suppliers okay hope the question is answered with this uh, I have another question from Thomas Thomas to say uh, it's more about, I would say, more like it sounds like a Siemens question. I would park this. And we have then uh, Urbel who comes back to the topic before how to, in, I would say, Connor, that's a question for you. How to involve stakeholders to develop suppliers to reach its full potential? I mean, first of all, yeah, you have to identify those stakeholders. And we already mentioned some of them. It's starting with the customers, but it's also sales, it's portfolio management, it's R&D, who are our stakeholder groups. And first of all, we have to make the good ideas from the suppliers also transparent to those stakeholder groups. So that's again coming back to communication, to the openness. And then also it's, it's about building trust. And here we are talking about a huge topic like the mindset change. Why should an R&D expert also talk to procurement? And this is something where Michael and I and our colleagues are heavily working on to build this trust with all the different stakeholder units. And I would personally, I would very much focus on portfolio management, on the CTO organization, on the technical innovation organizations, but also on the R&D organization. And how do you involve them? So you take the phone or you write an email or you send a, a letter via uh, a word. So there are different opportunities, but how are you involving them? I mean, this very much depends on the situation and all of those communication ways, which you mentioned are perfectly fine. And an additional one might also be one of the platforms. Michael, I think he already mentioned the, the supply innovation platform a couple of times. So the involvement is, 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 is on those ways where you are in contact anyway. So don't open up new ways if there is the contact. And if there's no contact with those stakeholder groups, then let's look into it if there is one ideal platform, if there's one ideal way on how to involve them. So we try to play on as many channels as possible. And I think uh, thanks to Uwe Dienst, he, he asked a really naughty question again for you, Conrad, because he's going now more into detail. And how do we get innovative suppliers on approved vendor lists of our customers? How do we motivate sales to support new ideas? Now it comes all back to the question of value add. So, of course, we have to identify the value add, we have to understand the value add, and we have to make it transparent also to our customers so that they also accept this value add and that this is the incentive for our customers to also change their approved vendor lists. This will only happen if there is a benefit also for our customers in it. And this comes back to the motivation for supplier innovation. Only when there is a benefit, only when we can create some advantage then the innovation will be successful. Uh, okay. Thomas, Thanks. Good, uh, good, we have had some questions. questions. Yes. Good. Good. That was uh, to bring on the approved vendor list. So I know the, um, when the approved vendor list has been created on the very beginning with a strategic points, a um, couple of weeks ago, uh, so Conrad was together with some colleagues who they are creating the approved vendor list. And there was the question was how to bring innovation or innovative competence or um, with the innovativeness of a company to the scale of the strategic uh, sourcing for suppliers. That means from the future, the innovation 
power of innovation and the, we say the opportunity to innovate for new products will be a part on the strategic evaluation of suppliers in the future as well. That means so, and just innovation is not enough to become an approved vendor, but a reliable supplier which fulfills the Siemens requirements that would be in the future would be an important part to be an innovative company to become an approved vendor. Okay. I will park some of the questions now later because I would like to build on this. So, Michael, how do we? I think that's something for for some of the uh, uh, people, colleagues that are listening. How do we screen the supply market for innovative partners? Um, yeah. So how to get we, into the system yeah, yeah. or how to get into contact or how is the whole show running? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice question. So I can answer and I cannot answer because we are in the middle of a beginning of a huge process on that. So but we have different methods and platforms. The most popular is our supplier innovation platform, which has been started uh, four years ago. And uh, because on this side, where we starting with that, maybe we can show on the supply innovation platform. It's on slide number. I think it's at the last slide we, we have to show how does it works and the supply innovation platform. So we're using for this one is uh, an exhibition. It's an, yeah, we say an exhibition for ideas. There is no business. We are not dealing on that. So we will present a platform to companies to present their idea. And it's the first time in our 170 years history in Siemens to give suppliers a voice to communicate its disruptive creativity. So, and this is just a place for window shopping to show that. So we have split this in our technology fields based on mainly based on the Siemens core technologies to present ideas for suppliers and for our own engineers. It's also not an detailed uh, described process behind, they can work around. They have a di digital work on the supply innovation platform and pick up what they see on this form to present their ideas. So what we can do, that was the first idea. It's for free for every supplier and it is not a platform to present companies. So we have a lot of proposals where companies, they would just say a company presentation. We say, thank you. No, we do not accept this. So we only accept ideas, innovative products. Please present these products and they will do this. Currently, we have around about 400 proposals on the platform yeah, to be very open. The philosophy behind this, the innovation has to find Siemens and not Siemens the innovation. But we also have some other ideas, for example, to search for a supplier if we have a specific request with our um, proposal sets and so with scouting, with digital scouting, with innovation radars or one thing is a radar for existing suppliers to understand what technologies they can provide else. So in our internal list, we see a supplier just with a product which the supplier currently deliver, but this is no description beyond uh, what they can do else, what competence they have, and that's we're still working on that. But this is too early to go here in details. Maybe we have a DigiSofa next year where I can present something more in detail about this. Oh, I think when you say you have already 400 ideas, uh, then you should give a glimpse what what's in. I think the, the first important message was, if I understood it correctly, no company presentations. Yes. But ideas that are relevant for business. So maybe you have two or three yes. ideas or you can describe two or three ideas that were say landing on you are they are these ideas landing on your table or where is this 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 post box going to that's good for each innovation field we have one owner beyond and a team of experts and the first what we're doing is so with the incoming ideas we check this idea it's a validation that means by legal entities or by um, so some company um, regulations. So is it can we communicate this internally or not? And then when it is free, there is an 
team of experts lead by, a, we call it innovation manager, to have a look on that. And if this team see, oh, that's a good idea, I know a colleague who can use it and he can forward this idea very quickly, very simple to uh, its own internal network and show this to the network. Hey, there's an idea, maybe you are interested on that or I know you were uh, working on this. Or so as well, if there's some um, questions to the supplier, they also can ask back with one mouse click, send to supplier and answer, please give us some more information what we're doing about this. Even so, we also can communicate with supplier there's a communication box where suppliers and the Siemens experts also can describe some comments or some questions internally. So that's the point. And, but it is not just for the managers and for the experts. Everyone within Siemens can join into the supply innovation platform, open the door, walk around the different innovation field, check what they have, yeah, look at this with some keywords, maybe what's interesting on me. So I'm interesting maybe for building technology you can say, oh, give me all the proposals which uh, could be interesting for building technology or for mobility or some proposals which are more for electronics. So we can sort this by our own self and everyone within Siemens that 300,000 colleagues have an access to this uh, platform and can select it like look in a catalog or walking around in an exhibition hall. So that's the uh, typical Siemens interview, but I'm more interested from a Siemens supplier view. So if I'm a supplier, what, what's my typical response time? Do I have to wait for years or for months or What's the response time if I hand in an idea or will it be in a dead end street? So first, is yeah, some yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first, yeah, that's a good question. So sometimes for a supplier, so the first is when a, a proposal comes in and we check the proposal, supplier will get and feedback. Yes, your uh, proposal was coming in. So when it is free and it's open for Siemens after validation, supplier got the second information and say, yes, uh, it's now free, it's visible. And then is one special thing I got forgot before. So everyone who can join into the innovation platform can rate this by one to five star the proposals. And that's what the supplier can see. There's a direct feedback to supplier. The supplier will see how many people within Siemens has a few on this uh, proposal, which one has been forwarded, and which ones, and then how many people has forwarded this idea and how does it be rated? So is it just with one, two star or with four, three and a half or four stars? So he can see the rating. So the supplier can follow the dynamic on this platform. If we have a look on his own proposal and as well supplier and say, oh, my proposal is rated with just two out of five stars. I can describe on the comment section, please Siemens, give me some more information. Why is my proposal so poor rated or my proposal is rated with five star out of five on the range of five, but it's after three months, I have no request for business. What's the reason for that? So it's always open supplier can ask questions on the supplier innovation platform itself. Yeah. Okay, this means there will be, it's a short response time. Uh, and based on this, I have two questions. I start with the question from Sasha because that fits wonderful into this rating and the quality of the idea. Uh, he asks, and I think that's close to you, Michael, why shouldn't it, and then in this, I would like to get also an answer from Conrad. Uh, why should an existing supplier share their innovations with us when it's an open secret, we have multiple suppliers for the same product ordered based on price. They have no benefits and it would rely on goodwill and personal connections. So how to deal with this? Yeah, uh, that, that, let, let me answer that point. The first rule on the supplier innovation platform, please do not communicate it any restricted information. So, or any, so it just is an open platform. You have to think about 
if you present your product on an exhibition, what you're doing, you show your product, you send some we say advantages of your product. And even they're all your competitors in the same hall, they see what you're doing. And so here on the supply innovation platform, other companies cannot see what you're doing. But anyway, you have to present only open innovation, like an exhibition hall, show us the product, give us some bullet point, what is important about this and why should Siemens use this idea? And that's just the point where we, uh, where you can communicate with that. So that means all information you present is just visible for Siemens, not for any other company. Please do only present open ideas. So I cannot guarantee for 300,000 colleagues if someone is doing a screenshot and communicate this to everyone, it's not allowed, but I cannot give you the guarantee. That's the reason why I ask you only to present open ideas on the point like you do in a real exhibition hall just this is on a digital way we do the same conrad maybe you can also uh, your views especially if i uh, break through innovation that's a little bit secret how to deal with this what means a little bit secret? I mean, this little bit secret, this breakthrough innovation, this might be the differentiating factor. This might be the differentiating yes. factor for this supplier compared with other suppliers. And this could also be the differentiating factor for us in our complete solution to our customers. So then why should a supplier hide this uh, differentiating factor? Um, from us, when, when this could be to his advantage. Of course, if in case there is intellectual property involved, then this has to be described in a way that this little secret in an initial step can be kept. But there are ways to describe uh, the features, the innovation, without disclosing the IP immediately. So this means I hand it in via the Siemens innovation platform and then we Siemens will contact the supplier and start a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with selected people. Yes, yes. And in this one-on-one -on -one dialogue with selected people, then of course, non-disclosure agreements, all kind of confidentiality, this can be discussed on a bilateral basis and this will be kept on a bilateral basis. So I think this is the way Disclose as much information as possible to describe your innovation on the Siemens innovation, on the supply innovation platform, but then disclose the full story once it comes to the direct contact. Okay, because I got by the admin a question from LinkedIn uh, and you partly described it, but only partly, how a supplier ideas cascaded down to the organization. So like Chad Michael, maybe you can also explain there's an idea and how is it cascaded down to the organization? So if it's, for example, for a digital industry in, in, in Congleton for a new numeric device. It was, um, well, it was a good question. So when we start with the supply innovation platform, that was the biggest question. So how you can do this? Some companies, they're working 50 people behind uh, to select this. So we was moving um, or we create a different way. When supplier will join into the supply innovation platform. So he will guide it through a menu. And one question is to which business of Siemens does your uh, idea fit at the most one. And on this stage, supplier can open all the business fields of Siemens, he will have an access to all of our products. And now the supplier can select which of out of this come uh, out of this business fields of Siemens will be the best one where the supplier expects. So for example, if I have an electronic part, so it maybe would be the best one for 
um, yeah, for, for digital industry or for smart infrastructure, not so much for Siemens Energy as well or for mobility because they're buying some other things. So they have to do to focus a little bit by its own self and he got all the information. The supplier will also guide it through the Siemens world. He will learn a lot of things. So how does Siemens works? And with that, the supplier also can adjust this a little bit. And when internally an engineer will come in and he can filter according exactly this selection of the suppliers itself he can select by technology or by business field and he can find out what's the best idea for me okay um based on this we we have another question from uh, gokul patil and uh, I, i think here michael and conrad i challenge you quite intensively um, will appreciate if you explain one or two examples of supply innovation in machining vendor category. Do we have such detailed uh, knowledge here at the table at the moment? Machining vendor category. So uh, we do not have a machining vendor category. So um, we currently we have open uh, from 14 different fields on our supply innovation platform. Why we do not open more on this? Because I just opened such innovation fields where are experts beyond and an innovation manager say, yes, I will take this. There are so many other fields of um, new technologies. That's a new thing, what we can use and but so we cannot provide for suppliers a process beyond where we checking their ideas and where we're handling with that. And that means this idea will be lying around and nobody will care about this. And for this, it's too much work from our suppliers. I will be honest to suppliers and that uh, would be fair to them. So when they put a lot of work and present their ideas, there should be someone beyond they can work with that. So I hope in the future we will open some more innovation fields, but currently I know it's limited. There are some more technology fields. So we are thinking about for the future for some further technology fields. The only thing what I can say to suppliers, please have a look every month. So we are adjusting something. We open new fields uh, or, or new changes for this if you sound found someone. The other thing is, if you have a technology and say, I'm not sure where does it fit, then please put it in this innovation field where is the most overlapping with your technology. Internally, during the evaluation, we will check this. And when we see, okay, this, or say this uh, product fits more to another innovation field, then we hang it over, we switch it over to another innovation field internally, and we communicate this to the supplier. So we talked a lot about the supply innovation platform and uh, you both prepared a question regarding the supply innovation platform, what we are discussing about. And I think Daniel, could you please uh, show the next Menti question? Because this could then be give or create some input uh, for the further development. And the question on this Menti, uh, in this Menti uh, 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 poll is, um, what do you wish in the future from the supply innovation platform? So here you can choose uh, which kind of information is for you in the future more relevant. And as long as you, um, for the audience, please um, answer this question that we can customize the supply innovation platform much better now. Uh, I have another question for Matthias. Uh, and I think that goes to the direction of Michael. Um, maybe you have some figures. What is the success rate of the innovations provided on the platform? How many are implemented by the business? Okay. Uh, that way I cannot say success rate, but I can give you a number for the hit rate. That means how, what is the share we are using internally? It's currently roundabout by between two and three percent. 
That means from 100 incoming proposals, there are two or three proposals will landing on our business fields. They work without, will be invited by our suppliers. Why does it not more on the point? It has to do with time. Maybe the other proposals are also will become, uh, will be recognized later on it. Other side, it's like a trade for, it's like a sh exhibition show. If you open a booth on an exhibition, they are walking around hundreds of hundreds of people. And what is your hit rate of a exhibition or a hit rate of an announcement in a magazine? I think so. We are in a good average with this. So to say with a hit rate of two or three percent, but it's always depending on the quality of the innovations. Whereas see, it is not the same hit rate in each innovation field. We do have innovation field where we come to close eight or 10 uh, percent by the hit rate. And with some other innovation field, it's below of this point. So. Uh, uh, one year ago, we opened an innovation field for um, a software topic uh, for this one for cybersecurity. And we had a hit rate with more than 10% on this time. So now it has closed because it was a wish of the innovation manager. They have enough ideas internally. So it's always depending on this uh, topic itself. Oh. Okay, thanks. I think what you just said is uh, is an interesting uh, benchmark because in my previous life I had also to work or I had the pleasure to work in sales and I think a hit rate of 3% is not that bad and when you think about 10% it's uh, when you look about the time and money you invest and what you get for it and it's amazing. So therefore, um, dear suppliers, that's Sounds promising. It's so, but if I understood it correctly, the supply innovation platform is more like a fair where you present your ideas, your new ideas uh, that have to be uh, more or less uh, to be communicated. It should be broad based, but there is no uh, IP topic behind. And before I go to the very nice question from Ludger, and thanks to Matthias for the response, it also helps us. Um, regarding our discussion. So, Matthias, uh, um, Conrad, so we talked about the supply innovation platform. And when I look at the flashlight of the Menti, I think uh, the most highlighted is more transparency about the process forward. So, <laughs> exactly what we have here. So, something we will work on this later. So, therefore, Conrad, I would like to jump to something else. What do we provide as Siemens beyond the digital platforms? So is there more? There's, there's much more. Of course, we focus very much on the digital platforms, this being a digital sofa. But let me just take two examples, explain those a little bit. It's the virtual supplier innovation roadshow and it's supplier co-creation. The Virtual Supply Innovation Roadshow is something which we developed very quickly once the Corona pandemic hit us, when also our suppliers could not visit us anymore and we also had to close our doors for our suppliers for face-to-face -face meetings. So we very quickly implemented very brief roadshows, virtual format, where one or two suppliers could introduce their innovations to us in not more than total 45 minutes and we very much challenged our suppliers in pitching their innovations within 10 minutes. And it was an interesting experience because at the beginning we very often got the feedback, this is way too short to, to explain my innovation to you. But at the end it worked out perfectly and we had very, very good presentations within 10 minutes innovations. The good thing is that for those roadshows we could invite the already mentioned cross functions. So we could invite not only procurement people, but also research and development, product management, and also technical innovation colleagues. And we had very good participation in those roadshows. Already six roadshows have been performed. Always tried to cluster those roadshows with one specific topic um, to give you two examples. One was around ultra wideband communication, something which we need them in many different business areas within Siemens. The other roadshow was around sensor technologies. Again, something which is not only used in one specific business area. 
and the the roadshow um, turned out to be so successful and there have been so many follow-ups after the roadshows that we will continue this and i'm also convinced that also once the pandemic is over hopefully very soon that we will also transfer this roadshow into the new normal so those will also survive in the world post corona a second example where we currently work on and you thomas mentioned this already you are also already doing this with SAP, it's supplier co-creation based on something which we very successfully already do with our customers for a couple of years. Co-create with customers based on open innovation using methodologies like design thinking. And that's something which we now also want to fully leverage and use with selected suppliers on selected topics. And this methodology, which we have in place as customer value co-creation, we will transform also into a supplier co-creation. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have still two or three questions in the chat, but it seems a little bit like from Siemens internal colleagues. And uh, I would like to follow up these questions uh, in the later stage because we have only five minutes left. Uh, because we just got one from Sardash Bantamur, a very interesting a uh, question for both of you, Michael and Conrad, and please make it short because we have also a last Menti question prepared. So let's start, say, with Michael. And I look at the watch, 30 seconds, because here I would like to have a short, precise, precise uh, answer that all suppliers can understand. How do we recognize suppliers for their innovative ideas? How do we recognize, please, uh, could, could, could you help me a little bit? What, what's the, the meaning behind? How do we recognize supplier? For the innovative ideas. So what means, from my point of view, what's an innovative idea? What's an innovative supplier? So what's an innovative supplier? That's, I would hand over, I know Conrad has prepared a perfect answer on that, Conrad. Yeah, I have okay. an answer on that. It's a difficult question and it needs longer than 30 seconds, but I try to sum it up in 30 seconds. Of course, there are some concrete facts and figures, like a number of patents, like R&D spending, even the age of the portfolio in a, in a company could be some, some KPIs. But there's much more behind. There's also the business models behind. There is the processes those companies run. And very, very important, it's the cultural aspect. So um, the better the culture is developed in a company, and culture means diversity. Culture means failure culture as well. Agile approaches, mindset. The better this is developed, the more, the higher the chance that this company is an innovative one. Happy to give a more detailed answer in a follow-up to Chisofa. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I look at uh, the time, um, that's a good handover. And um, I think there's something uh, like uh, recognizing in, in uh, say, awarding from Sönke. We have a quite good chat here where, for example, Philip helped me to answer some questions. I like the answer of Philip. Um, I would like to come to the last question because this you can now also, we, we leave it open for a longer time. Uh, and Daniel, please, could you show? because that's something where we are struggling. Uh, what's the reason why we have sometimes issues? So what keeps you from participating in co-creation for Siemens innovation? So is it a coffee or bad cookies, or is it the culture or is it technology or something like this? Um, maybe you can uh, give us a feedback and we try to prepare then a word cloud. What keeps us from participating or it keeps you from participating in co-creation for Siemens Innovations? That would be um, um, posted in the LinkedIn uh, comments after the video. So one minute to go. I try this time to be on time. Thanks to Conrad, thanks to Michael, and thanks to Daniel behind the screen because it's only a one man show. And thanks to the people who uh, contributed so much in the chat. Uh, 
good questions, keen to follow up. And I take what Conrad just said, maybe in half a year when we work or further improve the supply innovation uh, platform, or maybe also Michael can talk about some other platforms we are using and ramping up and maybe some other virtual shows or things we are doing with uh, avatar based software that we uh, can follow up and give you an update what was the outcome of this third uh, external visit so far and uh, like our admin just wrote if you want to follow us uh, on linkedin or if you want to uh, look at the internet we have our own home page feel free to comment to share feedback is always precious because then we can further develop it's now 12 o'clock lunch in central europe but maybe breakfast time in the americas and in india you're going for tea and in china maybe for dinner so thanks a lot for joining and hope you could enjoy it hope to see you in the next digi so far on linkedin goodbye Bye. 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 Bye.